I'm Dr. Donna Brown and I have been in practice at the Virginia Institute for 28 plus years now and I'm happy to be with you today to answer your questions about keratoconus and cross-linking. Well, keratoconus is a progressive thinning of the cornea. We don't really know why the cornea decides to do this. Most people don't even know what the cornea is, so let me just briefly tell you that it's the clear dome-shaped or spherical shaped structure that covers the brown or blue part of the eye. But in keratoconus, the cornea is not properly shaped. I mentioned that it's a spherically shaped structure and with keratoconus there's a progressive thinning that really causes it to be warped. And so instead of a sphere, it's more like a cone. So it's called keratoconus, kerata, Latin for cornea. For years, when a person developed keratoconus, at first it would just be a progressive degree of astigmatism for which we would prescribe glasses. And when it progresses further, a rigid contact lens. And when it progresses, further a corneal transplant. And it can still get to that point where we would need to do a type of corneal transplant to correct the condition and restore good vision. But now we have an interim step with something called corneal cross-linking. The cross-linking describes what naturally occurs in our cornea. As we get older, the collagen, which is what our cornea is made of, cross-links or connects itself in a way that makes it stiffer. And so researchers developed a way to do that artificially. It's a procedure that we do, but it's an outpatient office procedure. Corneal cross-linking requires that we instill riboflavin, which is a B vitamin, in a drop form. It is absorbed by the cornea, and then a certain wavelength of light that has been made especially to interact with that riboflavin-soaked cornea and that over time allows the cornea uh, collagen to cross-link and it stops the progression of keratoconus in most people. As the insurance companies are understanding that this technology does work and that we do have this as an interim step and maybe prevent someone from needing that corneal transplant, they're understanding that it's something that they should offer as a covered procedure. So we are having a little bit more success with that and so it's a matter of our helping the insurance carriers understand sending them peer-reviewed literature articles, sending them their, our own data, etc., and then hopefully the insurance carriers will help us down the road and, and being more amenable to helping the folks financially. So our goal, with, like with many things, is just early detection. So see your eye doctor, let them evaluate what's going on, and make sure you have beautiful, clear, and perfectly shaped corneas, because you need both.